Hi shavers, welcome back to MC Shaving. Today is another video in the Shave America series, if you couldn't tell by the intro. It's for the state of New York. Now New York has a bunch of scents. They have apple peel, nutmeg, pumpkin, and river. For today's shave, I chose to go with pumpkin. And we are going to use Uncle John's Pumpkin Spice. This is a real good uh, scent. It's a fall, like pre-winter scent, but I, I love it. I could shave with it any time of the year. So we're going to go with pumpkin for today's shave. The products that we're going to use. So we're going to start things off with the Art of Shaving Sandalwood Pre-Shave Oil. Just going to give myself a quick coat. We are going to use the uh, Yaki Sangrada Familia brush. So this is the Tuxedo Synthetic. It is a 24 millimeter Yaki knot. We are going to use the Parker CR Convertible Razor. This is the closed comb head. And inside we are going to go with a Dorco Platinum ST300 blade. This is the second shave on this. And we are going to then add to the uh, lather once we get it. We're going to put some Sterling Frost Drops in it. Add a little kick of menthol. And for the post shave, we're going to use the Art of Shaving Sandalwood Post Shave Balm. We'll see if I need any Witch Hazel at all or if I need to use my alum block. So this is a synthetic brush. You don't have to soak it. However, I'm going to put it here in the cappuccino mug just to get warm, collect some water. That will help us do our lather. Now, while that's heating up, before we get into the shave, just some fun facts about New York. So, the Statue of Liberty is iconic. It was a French gift to us. And if you ever been to New York, I'm sure that's one of the tourist sites that you've been to see. It's actually a copper statue. So even though it's green, it is rusted and copper turns to green when exposed to the elements over time. Uh, gifted from the people of France, the people of the United States on October 28th, 1886, the Statue of Liberty is a figure of Libertus, a robed Roman Liberty goddess. She holds a torch above her head with her right hand, and in her left hand carries the tabula and sata, inscribed in Roman numerals, which translates July 4th, 1776. That is the date the U.S. Declaration of Independence was born. Uh, a broken shackle and chain lie at her feet as she walks forward, commemorating the national abolition of slavery. So that was a pretty cool gift from the French. It's iconic. You say New York, immediately that comes to mind. I've seen it many times. Now, some of you may have been able to go up into the staircase, which takes you up to the torch. Now, that has not been open in my time. And if it has for a brief moment, I have not been able to make that trip uh, up to the torch. But um, it's pretty cool to be able to, uh, you know, do that. Back in the day, they were allowed to do that. So here's a pic of the Statue of Liberty. Now, some of you history buffs may know this next part. So New York City was the nation's capital from 1785 to 1790. George Washington's inauguration took place in New York City, as did the first Supreme Court and the drafting of the Bill of Rights. Philadelphia had the honor of hosting Congress from 1790 to 1800 until the Washington DC building was completed in 1800, which is where Congress is today. So that's just some cool opening facts about New York. And New York is the state that I live in. I live in upstate New York, or western New York, which is about equidistant between Buffalo and Niagara Falls. And if you're not familiar with that part of the state, we're actually bordering Canada. So it's not uncommon for us New Yorkers to take a trip into Canada for the day. And we'll get to some of that later on when I share some fun facts with you. But let's wet the face and get this shave started. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well. How is your week going so far? 
good. Had a little bit of uh, stuff to take care of for the family. My mom's heater went, so we had to have the repair guy over and fix the heater. Just dripping the, uh, the brush out. I'm gonna take it right to the bowl. And just do a good brush load. Oh, and I never shared that with you in the opening. Well, we're gonna use the fine bowl to mix this up in. So here is, it's just been, what, a few seconds? I mean, this is, this is loading beautifully. I love it. So we got the uh, furnace all fixed. There we go. That looks like a pretty good brush load there. So I am going to just add a little bit of water to the bowl. There we are. Here's the fine bowl. And we're just going to get to whipping a nice pumpkin lather. Man, oh, smells beautiful. The temperature is starting to get a little chilly. We did get some snow, and even though I live here in western New York, you know, you mentioned Buffalo to a lot of people, and they're like, oh, snow, snow. Yeah, we get some, but it's, it's not... The, the weather that comes over the Great Lakes just misses Buffalo. So if you live in the area and you're familiar with the South Towns, which is just south of Buffalo, that's what gets the snowfall. That's where the ski uh, lifts and the, and the ski lodges are. And uh, they don't have to do too much uh, fake snow during the wintertime because they, they certainly get enough of it. Uh, but, you know, if the wind's coming across Cal... Uh, Canada kick up a little bit or the weather direction changes then the weather starts to head up north and then that's where we get hit. So we're good for a couple storms a year not blizzard storms but it gets pretty windy and pretty snowy. You do have to own a snow shovel at minimum or a snow thrower if you live in my town. Alright this is whipping up fantastic. So, that's what's in the bowl, that's what's on the brush. In fact, some of it's trying to run away from the bowl. So now that we have that, I'm just going to add a little to the face here so we don't waste it. <laughs> Rubs right in, barely anything there. I didn't even put the oil on yet. So, I am going to take the frost drops. And we're going to add some to the bowl. Here we go. Get it down there. there go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's good. All right. Now we're just going to mix that up real good inside the lather that we have. I can see a few of the bristles coming off of the brush. I haven't used this brush too much, but I have used it. Still needs to get broken in, even though it's synthetic, you still need to break in the brush because you will have loose hairs just from uh, manufacturing and packaging. I mean, nothing's perfect, but it's very soft synthetic brush. The knot, I think, is good being a 24 millimeter, it's not a huge knot, it doesn't have a huge loft, but it does just fine. All right, there we go. I'm going to put the cream. don't want to lose too much of it. Rinse off the hands. All right. So did you know, as I put on the oil, that uh, you can visit three different Hall of Fames in New York? Right? Can you guess which ones they are? First one I'm sure most sports fans are going to get. Right? Cooperstown. The... Uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. But there's also a stickball Hall of Fame in East Harlem, which is along the same lines as baseball, but that's where baseball originated from, was stickball. Similar concept. 
And then you also have the International Boxing Hall of Fame, which is in Canasota? Canasota, New York. Never heard of that place. But I kind of figured with, with all the boxing in Madison Square Garden and uh, a lot of the major fights back in the day, you know, Rocky from Philly. A lot of boxing background from the city. There we go. Art of shaving. Slick oil. Just need to get it off my hands here. Ooh. All right. Got it all over the bottle. Another fun fact, uh, if you're ever from New York and you hear somebody go, hey, you want a slice? That means pizza. So the first pizzeria in the nation opened in 1905 in New York City, Lombardi's Pizza, which is located at 32 Spring Street, and it's still in business today. So if you want to go to New York and have a slice of New York pie, go to Lombardi's. And then, uh, real quick, the Brooklyn Bridge is famous in New York City. That was built in 1883. Now, at the time it was built, New Yorkers were afraid it would collapse. So, to calm down folks, P.T. Barnum, that's right, the famous circus guy, P.T. Barnum, safely led 21 elephants across the bridge to show its strength and return faith, or restore faith, that the bridge was going to support everybody who went across it. So there you have it, and we are ready to put on our first application. Oh, beautiful. This soap whipped up real well. And, <laughs> it's nice and, uh, it's nice and refreshing. I mean, it's not going to be the overpowering menthol. You know, some of you guys could add more drops if you really like that menthol burst. But, uh... It just takes an ordinary soap. And it gives it a little something extra. And those of you that have sensitive skin, I know some of you are not able to use menthol because you have sensitive skin. Well... The menthol drops from Sterling are inexpensive and you could always control the amount of menthol. If you'd like to give it a try, I'm not saying to do it, you know, you do it on your own accord, but very, very light. Uh, and that was what, 10 drops? So, depending on how much lather you have too. But I could definitely uh, feel a little bit of the sensation on my skin. We'll just bask in it for a little bit, let it let it take its business and cool the face. All right. Here we go. We'll heat up the razor, Dorco blade, Parker convertible, closed comb. I definitely feel it. After you let it sit, I could feel the menthol. I haven't shaved with this razor in a while, even off camera, so I figured I'd pull this out and give it a go. I'm going to have to get the open comb out. Use that one. Use that, that plate again. Oh, yeah, nice. I only have uh, about three days growth or so. I did shave during the week, this week got away from me, lots going on, so I, it's been a while since I brought you guys a shave, so sorry about that. But trying to trying to take care of business on my end. Now this being a Shave America shave, I had all of the research done for this state. So 
and that was all set to go. Oh, got a hair. And then uh, the next state on deck, I can't remember which one it is, but I know I have uh, I have the uh, eh, shaving my collar. I have the information for that ready to go to. Yeah, these Dorco blades aren't too bad. They're the first blades that I had received. They came with my uh, micro touch. Trying not to talk while I do that part. Oh, you know what? I was shaving against the grain. Ah, how do you like that? Well, that's all right. We'll make sure we get it taken care of in the next pass. So we're going to put this second coat on. Now that the hair is gone, we'll be able to feel that menthol even more. Mmm. Smell that pumpkin. Nice fall scent. So the Chiefs and the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Anybody going? I'm sure that uh, a lot of people out there got your football squares. Even if you really don't follow football, it's kind of a thing, you know, betting. Hmm, nice. This lather whipped up quite well. I could definitely uh, feel the menthol. Very good, very good. We'll let that menthol sit and take effect a little bit as we share some more facts with you for New York. So let's see what we got here. Ah, so let's talk about the railway in New York, right? The underground sub lines. So the first railroad was chartered in America, ran a distance of 11 miles between Albany and Schenectady. The Mohawk and Hudson Railroad Railroad opened on August 9th, 1831. Its name was changed to the New York Central Railroad in 1853. So besides the original railway coming from New York, the extensive subway system that exists underground contains 656 miles of track used for passenger transport. Now there's other track that passenger transport specific, so there's actually more track than that. So if you include the track in New York City transit yards, shops, and storage areas, that equals 842 miles of track. Now if you laid that down uh, end to end, it would stretch from New York City to Chicago. Now decommissioned New York City subway cars are actually dumped into the ocean to provide homes for sea creatures. There's been over 2,500 cars that have been dumped to date. So if you're a deep sea diver or you know where they dump them, you can go check out some old subway cars. Now, here's another interesting fact too. So starting in 1901, New York was the first state to require automobiles to have license plates. I shared that tidbit on a past state. I can't remember which one, but I did share that. Now, the plates were not issued by the state. You know, nowadays the, the correctional facilities and, and, and the penal colonies, they're the ones that, uh, you know, are, amongst others are known for producing license plates. But uh, they weren't produced by the state when they first started. They were made by individual owners and it contained the owner's initials. Fun fact, that's pretty cool. 
and uh, in the early 19th century, New York's sanitation system largely consisted of pigs roaming the streets to eat the trash. There you go. <laughs> you know, that would probably be a pretty good idea after the Macy's Day Parade for Thanksgiving. You know, just whoosh, send the pigs out, help clean up. <laughs> All right, let's do pass two across the green. So if you're looking at getting frost drops and trying them out, I put 10 drops in. You know, you could do it to your liking. You don't want to put drops directly on the skin. So you need to mix it with the shave cream. But I can feel it. So, if you're trying to gauge the bottle, it says two to four drops. I did that, and it was pretty weak, almost non-existent. Again, depending on the amount of lather. So, you might want to try Four to six, that seems like a happy, happy place to be. Four to six. All right, we went against the grain last time. Uh, no feedback whatsoever. But we'll do a third pass. Why? Why do a third pass? Because I love talking to you folks. And I have more things to share about New York City. This is uh, one, of the, one of the pieces that I, I really wanted to share because it's, uh, it, it's where I live. It's where I'm from. So, uh, before we get to that. So, if you ate at a restaurant. At a, uh, here, let me start again. If you ate at a new restaurant every day for 12 years, you still would not have visited all of New York's eateries. Tons of cuisine if you've ever been there. And if you are looking to take a trip there, anything you could possibly think of and then some, there's a place to eat it. Or drink it. <laughs> um, Adirondack Park in upstate New York, closer to where I live, is larger then Yellowstone, Yosemite, Grand Canyon, Glacier, and Olympic Parks combined. So if you're looking to go to a great, huge park, maybe some camping, Adirondacks in upstate New York is the place to go. Now, near and dear to my heart, Niagara Falls. It's a state park. It's the oldest state park in the U.S., established in 1885 as the Niagara Reservation. Approximately 3,160 tons of water flow over Niagara Falls every second. And here's a couple clips. Now you have to excuse the wind, so a little wind in some of them, but uh, mainly you're going to look at it for the sights. And uh, you're going to get a view of the falls, and there's two parts. There's the Horseshoe Falls, and then there's uh, the regular falls. And, and in the background in some of these shots, you're going to see some buildings. That's Canada. You can literally walk there and take a bridge over the, uh, the Niagara River, which is where the falls are. And it's like a two-minute walk across the bridge. It's it's huge bridge, but uh, you can take a car, walk, and, and it crosses right over Niagara Falls. So pretty much you draw a line down the center, Half is in Canada, half is in the States. Uh, so you'll see some shots at night with it lit up. Uh, so here, have a look at these.
That's pretty awesome, right? I mean, that is a ton of water. Now, you can get up close and personal. There's the boat ride, which is the Maid of the Mist. There's the walking tour, which basically you can reach out and touch the falls. There's the, um, uh, you know, the overhang or the overlook where you can get a good uh, view of the, all of Niagara Falls. It makes for some great pictures. It's, it's a fantastic place to visit. Now, I'm spoiled because I live in its backyard. I've been there so many times I can't count them anymore. But for someone who just comes to the area and they have a chance to experience it for the first time, it's a wonderful place to visit. And there's much more than what I'm able to share with you in, in you know, today's video. Uh, you know, and there's much more in every state. I just can't fit it all in, but I'm just picking some of the high points to share with you. And certainly if you're going to make a trip to Niagara Falls, reach out to me. I can tell you where the hot spots are. I can tell you the best place to park and how to view them. So just reach out and let me know if you ever make it to my neck of the woods. All right, let's go for the third pass. Mmm, still got that pumpkin smell. Love it. Nice and cool. Now, if you're worried about the frost drops, staying on the bristles and stuff, don't worry about that. Wash it off in the water. See, now this is a little dry, a little pasty, so I'm just going to dip the tips, right? Get a little bit of water on there. Tons of leather. Tons, tons of leather. There we go. Little thin, but you know what? We already had two passes. It's pretty much a touch up for me at this stage. Yeah, that's good. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. We'll let that sit. Just kind of soak in a little bit. I'll share some more facts with you. Okay, what should we share with you next? Um, oh, the performers that you hear in the subway, did you know that they have to audition each year uh, if they want to be officially recognized by the Transit Authority? So if you're ever traveling the subways and you see the performers, you know, like the ones that are on the, the Strip in Vegas or Hollywood Boulevard in California, you know, those performers actually have to go through an audition process. Now, uh, Washington Square Park, known as the center of NYU's campus, New York University's campus. It was originally a graveyard for yellow fever victims and a site for public executions back in the day. So you, you're not going to get anything now. It's not contagious. It's been contained in, we're talking years, decades, century ago. Um, and even though that you live in New York City, perhaps you may not even notice this, on 33 Thomas Street in New York City, there's a 550 foot skyscraper that can be seen with no windows. It was originally built to withstand the fallout of a nuclear blast for up to two weeks. That's why no, video, uh, no windows, which is pretty neat. And then uh, the world's smallest church is located in Oneida, New York. This is Cross Island Chapel. It sits in the middle of a pond. It's just over 28 square feet and it seats two people. It is a non-denominational church. In order to be considered a real church and not just a model or children's playhouse, it must have hosted a semi-public religious event. So there was a religious event held there. That's why it's recognized as the world's smallest church. Here's a picture of that. Boy, isn't that a tiny church? <laughs> Man, you see the inside was so small. Man. All right, let's go against the growth. In fact, uh, I'm going to shave. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go. Definitely got feedback there.
face of the neck. Oh, perfect. Wow, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's go right here. Above the chin line, we'll go against the green. So hopefully, you guys are uh, sorry about that. I had to shave. Prosperous so far in your new year. Did you make any resolutions? Here we are, three weeks later. Are you still doing them? Did you change them? Did you quit? <laughs> you have to let me know. Other side of the blade. That is it. Let's do a quick rinse. Ooh, slickness. You could skate on my face. Man, it's very slick. Not dry at all. Very nice. Uh, you know what? I will uh, I'll use a little bit of alum. Why not? So we have the Sterling Allen block. There we go. Just going to wet one side of it. No stinging. No irritation. That was a really good shave. All right. I'm gonna dry the face. Beautiful shave. Beautiful. We're gonna put some balm. Here's the art of shaving, sandalwood. Put some balm back into our skin. Nice scent, good scent. I can feel the uh, the coating, the softness. I mean, that was, this is a BBS shave, man. All around, awesome shave, awesome guests. Thank you for spending time with me. 
We do appreciate your subscriptions. We love to read your comments. So make sure that you leave us some. Click the thumbs up if you like it. You can hit the bell. I don't know, is there, is there still a bell? Get notified? Maybe not, I don't know. But uh, certainly check back often and look for some new content. Um, again, thanks a whole bunch. We wish you well. We'll talk to you real soon in the next shave. Until then, take care.